Hey what's up guys, today I'll show you a horror comedy film, The Menu. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with introducing the 11 guests who are about to feast in Hawthorne, a luxurious restaurant on an island. In order to avail reservations, a customer must pay thousands to experience the food because they're made by the celebrity and executive chef, Slowick. The guest consists of the three finance employees who work for the restaurant owner, a tycoon customer and his wife, who are the patron customers of the restaurant, a female food critic and her editor, an old actor and his mistress assistant. Lastly, Ginger Margot, who's on a date with a pretentious foodie who idolizes slow wit profoundly. A fairy arrives to accommodate them and then have them enjoy an appetizer courtesy of Slowick. Foodie savors the appetizer while giving culinary lessons to Margot, whereas Margot feels alienated from the overall impression of snobbery. The guests eventually arrive at the island, and the head waitress welcomes each of them by verifying if their identity matches the names on the guest list. However, a problem arises when head waitress acknowledges Margot with a different name, prompting Foodie to chime in and correct that he has brought a different guest. Head waitress pauses momentarily before considering the sudden change of lineup in the list. Nonetheless, the plan must progress, so head waitress tours them around Hawthorne, where they learn that all the delicacies served are inclusively planted, nurtured, harvested, and slaughtered within the island. While they're on their way to the restaurant, Foodie notices a cabin nearby, and head waitress enlightens him it's Shep Slowick's residence, where everyone is restricted from entering except him. The restaurant comprises a dining area adjacent to an open kitchen. Head waitress encourages them to observe the cooks at work, but taking photos is prohibited. Later on, Chef Slowick finally makes an appearance in the kitchen, who bears a stern and poised look, which intimidates Margot at first sight. For Amuse Booch, they receive a fruity and milky treat, and each table has its own stories to tell. Food critic and her editor distinguish the milk as goat, and Foodie melts over the dish. For Foodie, chefs are like gods, who necessarily kill, then create in order to produce art. Just then, Slowick loudly claps to convoke them, because it's time to begin. He informs them to expect an entire ecosystem, served on a platter for the next few hours. He also incites them not to simply eat, but to savor the flavor in their mouths too. The first course is The Island, a scallop on a rock with embellished sea plants. It illustrates the incomparable beauty of nature to mere humans. Meanwhile, the introduction prompts Foodie to be emotional, who later sneaks a photo of the dish. Food critic describes the dish as oceanic, the mistress listens to the old actor's trifling food review, and the finance trio blatantly compares the dish to foods made by their home chefs. Chef Slowick claps again to present the next course. Bread has existed for years and is considered the food of the common people. However, since these guests are rich and can afford expensive meals, they get no bread. The second course is breadless bread plate, which is just a palette of add-ons from Red Fife. The guests chuckle in disbelief, but their laughter falters when they realize the dish is not a joke. Food critic and her editor ignore the taste, but judge the splitting emulsion instead. Food critic even brags about baking her own bread, when suddenly, head waitress carries a bigger bowl of broken emulsion to their table to show they intend to make a mistake. Meanwhile, one of the finance guy demands bread from head waitress, but when she refuses to serve them, the other finance employee mentions their affiliation with the restaurant owner to threaten her. Still, head waitress refuses, forcing them to give up. Just then, she fixes the guy's table napkin as her way to whisper to his ear that they're going to eat what they deserve and not based on their desire. On the other table, Margot thinks the dish is outlandish for having no bread, but Foodie disagrees and explains Slowick is not a simple chef, because he's also a storyteller who ties his foods to allegories. Nevertheless, Margot refuses to eat, which irritates Foodie, who judges her for being oblivious to fine dining. Foodie then grabs her plate to eat them, causing him to accidentally bump a wine glass off the table. Head waitress quickly orders a floor cleanup, followed by an angry Slowick. He demands Margot to eat, but Margot responds there's nothing to eat. Moreover, she ascertains she's going to eat whenever she wants, rendering Slowick to be disappointed. He then leaves the table and walks up to the 12th customer, his mother, to kiss her head. Meanwhile, Tycoon's wife notices Margot resembles their daughter, but Tycoon only exasperatingly asks her to just end the obsession with Margot already. Slowick claps again to present the third course called Memory. It's an elevated chicken taco, meant to evoke a memory for each guest. However, before serving them, Slowick first shares his memorable taco Tuesday night. One Tuesday night, Slowick was forced to stab his drunk father with scissors in the thigh just to stop him from nearly killing his mother. However, Slowick regrets not stabbing his father in the throat instead. Afterward, the cooks serve the dish to everyone, but the guests are stunned by the custom-made tortillas before them. 
the tortillas reveal every iniquity they've committed in life. Foodies secretly took photos of the dishes despite the prohibition. Prints of restaurants that shut down after food critic gave them a negative review. Tycoon committed an affair. The actor's horrible movie, Calling Dr. Sunshine. And lastly, tax records of the finance trio embezzling money from their company. Obviously, the dishes stirred mixed feelings in everyone. The finance trio even scares head waitress into closing down the restaurant, but she finds the threat unnecessary. Meanwhile, Margo wants to send the tortillas back due to a violation of Foodie's privacy, but Foodie ignores the images and insults Margo's nosiness, instead as childish. Margo walks out because Foodie refuses to apologize. She struts the hallway and assumes the silver door is the restroom, but head waitress tells her it's behind another door. When Margot queries about the silver door, head waitress answers that it keeps something special. Margot enters the restroom afterward to smoke near the open window. Outside, a cook strangely carries angel wings into the woods. Unfortunately, her smoke break is interrupted when Slowick visits her. Slowick assumes Margot hates the food because she doesn't eat them, but Margot reassures him she's just not hungry. Slowick fires another question, but it's about her true identity this time. Even though Margot finds the question weird, she answers, Margot. However, Slowick doesn't believe her and even pinpoints that she's not supposed to be in the restaurant. Margot is offended by his remarks, provoking her to shout at him to get out of the way. Afterward, Margot and Slowick return outside the dining room to progress on the next course. Slowick claps again to present the fourth course called The Mess that's inspired by the life of the cook helper. No matter how much effort the cook helper makes to become a real chef, he still can't match the raised standards and expectations set by Slowit's greatness. The cook helper is expected to create perfection, but the immense pressure to fulfill the standard messes up with him, and therefore, the best coping mechanism for being deficient in his field is suicide. Slowick pecks the cook helper's cheeks right before the cook helper shoots himself in the mouth. His suicide generates a widespread panic among the guests, except Foodie, who is oddly undisturbed. Meanwhile, food critic and her editor quickly recover, as they presume the suicide is part of the menu's theatrix. However, for Tycoon and his wife, it's a sign to leave the place. Regrettably, nobody can leave the island, and anyone who attempts to leave is subject to penalty. Head waitress intentionally orders a cook to chop off Tycoon's left ring finger. His ring drops on the floor, and head waitress returns it back to Tycoon's wife. Moreover, the punishment also serves as retribution for Tycoon's cheating on his wife. While Tycoon cries in pain, food critic proudly assumes the menu is made for her benefit because she thinks it corresponds to the text invitation that she received from Slowick. Afterward, Margot meets Slowick in the kitchen as per his request. Margot is baffled by the transpiring mayhem, but Slowick still grills her over her true identity. Slowick wants to uncover her true identity because she's not part of the menu. The menu is strenuously planned and tailored for the guest, and her unanticipated presence is ruining it. Therefore, Margot receives an offer to die either with the staff or the guests, but she's still going to die both ways because it's the conclusion of the menu. Margot returns to the seat with a 15-minute timer to decide which side she wants. She's still aghast from the impending death when Foodie parades his jealousy of her. He thinks Slowick offered a kitchen course to Margot, so he calls her unbefitting to be his student. Margot is through with his foul mouth, so she slaps him hard on the face. Meanwhile, the finance guy impulsively grabs a chair to break the window, but the guest falls silent when the window doesn't break at all. They quickly realize they're trapped with Slowick and his cult-like staff. During break, the cooks serve tea to quell the brewing tension as they confront the hard truths in life. Just then, the old actor and the finance guy demand the reason for their torment, and Slowick answers that he thinks of themselves as ingredients for his masterpiece later on. Afterward, Slowick continues to disclose his abhorrence towards each guest. It turns out, he hates Food Critic for being a detached food critic who produces unnecessary scornful reviews that cause demolition to the livelihoods of many chefs. He hates the editor for being a coddler and enabler of Food Critic's unreasonable judgments for the sake of money. He's also aware of how Food Critic felt special upon receiving the invitation, but so does he which he's finally trapped in his restaurant. He dreads to end up like the old actor someday who compromised his sellout name and talent to a flopped film, calling Dr. Sunshine in exchange for profit. He also includes the old actor's mistress assistant in the hate list for having no student loans in her university. He hates Tycoon and his wife for being inattentive to what dishes they eat or how often they eat in the restaurant because they couldn't care less. Their wealth made them exploitative to what others might treat as a big deal. He hates the finance trio for using their status and affiliations to mistreat service workers. 
They're mainly at the restaurant to flaunt their riches, but never to respect culinary arts. He also hates his mother for being unappreciative of his efforts to be a great culinary chef. Despite his endeavor to increase the rates, quality, and standards of his arts, so more rich people are impelled to try his creation, it's never enough. He instantly regrets it, upon realizing it's foolish to satisfy insatiable people. Afterward, he professes his hatred to the restaurant owner, his boss, and angel investor, who helped him thrive in the food service industry even during the pandemic. However, behind the financial boost, the owner both questioned the menu and attempted to replace Slowick. Therefore, Slowick must do something to liberate himself from the restaurant owner. After that revelation, Slowick presents the course Fallen Angel, starring the restaurant owner in angel wings while dangling above the water. Everyone watches in horror as the owner slowly descends into the water until he drowns. After the little show, a timer goes off, and head waitress reminds Margot it's time. Margot then meets Slowick in the office to reveal she's an escort who was previously hired by Tycoon to make her role play as his daughter while watching him touch himself. Slowick sincerely acknowledges Margot as a fellow service worker like him, and as someone who's been in the industry for so long, he knows Tycoon is a bad customer even without further details. Slowick decides in the end for Margot to join his team because she's like them. Margot then asks if he enjoys giving services, but sadly, Slowick has lost his desire to cook for someone a long time ago, although he admits he misses the feeling. Margot and Slowick later rejoin the guests to go outside. Once outside, the sous chef personally presents the sixth course as the man's folly. It's inspired by Sue Shep's personal experience with Slowick, who numerously attempted to form a sexual relationship with her. When she endlessly rejected his advances, he just stopped talking to her for months. In conclusion, Slowick can escape holding accountability for his wrongdoings because he's the star and a man. Sue Shep stabs scissors in Slowick's thigh as payback for his crimes. Slowick then apologizes to her before she goes to the sides because it's time for a game. When Slowick instructs the male guests to attempt an escape off the island, they unhesitatingly run away fast. The game is meant to show how most men can easily leave behind their loved ones when facing adversity. Only Foodie stays behind to prove he's different from men, but Slowick orders him to join too. Meanwhile, the female guests return inside to eat the meal. So Chef even ends up in tears after they shower her food with compliments. Moreover, So Chef tells them the menu concludes with everyone dead. Afterward, they drink wine and Margot finally reveals her real name. Eventually, the male guests are caught and they return inside for the final course. Unfortunately, the menu can't progress due to one more problem. Slowick approaches Foodie to make him confess that he already knew the menu ends with everyone dead, but he still hired Margot after his girlfriend broke up with him because Hawthorne doesn't accept a one-seat reservation. Margot attacks Foodie after hearing the confession, but when the guards break them apart, Foodie remains unapologetic. Slowick then challenges Foodie to apply his culinary wisdom into practice, but he fails tremendously. Slowick wants to mortify him as a lesson. His obsession with being a whizzy of culinary arts is the reason why the joy of cooking is drained. He even involved Margot to harm just to fulfill his selfish desire. Slowick whispers to Foodie afterward, and even though it's unknown, it's powerful enough to make him kill himself. Slowick then faces Margot to tell her that she's finally free too. Afterward, Slowick instructs Margot to retrieve a barrel from the smokehouse, which they need for dessert. Even though head waitress senses she's about to get replaced with Margot, she still gives the smokehouse keys to her. When Margot is finally outside, she sneaks inside the cabin first to call for help. The cabin's interior looks exactly like the restaurant, including the silver door. Margot tries to open it, but head waitress appears to murder her new replacement. Margot fights back against her and happens to kill head waitress, ending her waiting life. Afterward, Margot uses her keys to enter behind the silver door where she discovers mementos of Slowick's past. A newspaper clip of food critics review for Slowick's old restaurant, Hawthorne's opening day, his family picture, and a candid photo of young Slowick smiling while flipping a burger. Coincidentally, there's a radio too, and Margot uses it to call for help. Margot shortly returns to the restaurant with the barrel. When she sits down, Slowick sits across her to let her know his intentions for tonight are pure, despite his atrocious conduct before. Suddenly, a coast guard blares the ship horn out on the sea, giving hope to the guests a chance to escape. However, this hope shatters soon, when the coast guard reveals himself as a cook too, who's just pretending to be a coast guard. Everyone is disheartened, and so is Slowick from Margot's betrayal, who now calls her a greedy taker too. Slowick soon returns to the kitchen to prepare dessert, but their preparation disrupts when Margot claps to call their attention. 
Margot proceeds to insult her experience in Hawthorne as unlikable. The foods are cooked not with love, but obsession. Eating becomes unappealing, and worst of all, she's still famished. When Slowick asks what she wants, Margot answers, an American cheeseburger. Slowick simpers while accepting the order and charges Margot $9.95. Slowick then cooks the supplementary dish with a smile, as if he's been transported to the day when he was a simple but happy fry cook. He serves the dish to Margot, who instantly loves it after taking a juicy bite. Slowick beams in delight upon hearing Margot's praise. For so long, Slowick never expects to feel a passion for cooking for someone else again. When Margot requests her food in a to-go box, Slowick, who's touched by Margot's authenticity and humility, willingly packs her food and even sets her free after receiving the payment from her. Margot looks back at the guests to see if anyone wants to join, but they simply watch her go, for they now already accept their fates. They still pay the restaurant, even though they're about to die. The movie ends with everyone burning to death as they become the main ingredients of Slowit's final masterpiece, the grandiose humid s'mores. Slowit believes the guests symbolize the downfall of his beloved culinary art, and therefore, they need fire to be cleansed from faults and to become brand new. Meanwhile, Margo is stuck in the sea after the Tesla ferry depletes from gas, not batteries. However, it doesn't matter because she's safe and enjoying the good cheeseburger made by a delighted chef for one last time. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.